Hey, there's no shame in trying things that people ain't never tried before. So what makes a good sequel exactly? This is a very divisive question, and there seem to be two main camps. Camp A. I think I've worked out the formula now. A good sequel, like Half-Life 2, Silent Hill 2, Tramway Rovers 3, is one that uses the original as a jumping off point for a whole new story with a whole new technology, while a bad sequel merely wallows in the original, like a hippo in a vat of liquidized children. And Camp B. For the most part, it's a sequel that does exactly what a sequel should. It's more of the same, but bigger, better, and more intriguing. Now let me clarify, Camp A tries new things and experiments. Camp B does more of the same, but better. They're separated by more than just that, but let's start there. Now before I explain and before you go up in arms, let me clarify. My goal isn't to say Camp A or Camp B is better. I'm aiming to explain their differences and why they're important. So let's start by breaking down Camp A. These games try new things and separate themselves from their predecessors, for better or for worse. Experimenting can yield great benefits, but it can also blow up in your face. For example, Far Cry 2 succeeded and distanced itself from its predecessor by taking a more serious tone and realistic approach to gameplay. The game was less campy and jokey, but holy shit it didn't need to be. Far Cry 2 was awesome because of how rough it was. It didn't feel like you were playing some 80s action movie, it felt like you were stuck in some third world hellhole nightmare. In that case, experimentation worked. It worked well. But in other cases, it doesn't work so well, like The Witcher 2. It continued the narrative, but tried a whole bunch of new gameplay gimmicks, like quick time events and just garbage forced stealth segments. In that case, experimentation didn't work out so well. But what's important is they learned from their mistakes and improved in The Witcher 3, which I would also categorize as a Camp A game, because it does not feel like the other two. Mechanically, anyways. If you wanted to move from The Witcher 1 to The Witcher 2, you'd have to learn an entire new set of controls and a bunch of new gameplay mechanics. If you wanted to move from The Witcher 2 to The Witcher 3, you'd have to do the exact same thing, because none of them feel identical. This is what makes a Camp A sequel unique, distinct. Again, that does not make them good or bad, it just makes them different. I mean, holy shit, Lost Planet is schizophrenic. The first game was single player with a narrative focus and a bit of combat. Lost Planet 2 ditched all that stuff, focusing on the tight combat and added online co-op. The third game went back to single player narrative focus, but amped up the atmosphere and storytelling tenfold. I actually made a much more detailed video about them. The first good video I ever made, I'll put a card right here so you can take a look at it. But let's move on to Camp B. Camp B sequels are very different from Camp A sequels because they are the same. The same as the game that came before. You could smoothly transition from Dishonored 1 to Dishonored 2 because mechanically they are identical. Dishonored 2 has new gadgets and two characters, but functionally, fundamentally, it is identical to the first game. This is true of every Camp B sequel. You don't need a huge lecture to move from Far Cry 3 to Far Cry 4. You know how the wingsuit works, you know how the crafting works, you know how the abilities work. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Dishonored 2 and Far Cry 4 are excellent games. Man, I rave about how much I love Dishonored 2 and all of the post-launch support it's getting for free. And I am anticipating the first DLC, I can't wait for it. But just because I like it and because it's refined doesn't mean it's memorable. And uh... You guys knew it, you knew what was coming, you knew I had an actual point to make. You the real Ogs, you know me. Every Skimmerlet video's gotta be like a wine opener, baby, with a twist and a point. But this is what I'm trying to get at. It's not just about experimenting or repeating, it's about what will be remembered and what will not. The Witcher 2 and The Witcher 3 will be remembered for years to come because they experimented. The Witcher 2 wasn't perfect, but it tried something new and paved the way for The Witcher 3 which came out legendary, and seeded CD Projekt Red, a small Polish developer, at the top, whooping huge American developers' asses. A great set of game sequels and a great real-life story. This is going down in gaming history. Comparatively, Dishonored 2 didn't accomplish much of anything. It's business as usual for Arkane and Bethesda, it's more of the same. It's very good, more of the same, but still just more of the same. 
I'll anticipate and buy the DLC, certainly, but I'm not going to be talking about it in 10 years. Whereas The Witcher 3, I'll probably tell my kids about. It's probably a game I'll let my kids play. And on the same note, let's just look at XCOM. I thoroughly enjoyed XCOM 2. I enjoyed returning to the universe, I was glad there was more to do, and I liked the changes it made. But again, it's not the one I'm gonna talk about, because it's not really worth talking about. The original is a much more interesting subject because it's a reboot done well, and if I wanted to talk about more of the same done well, I would just talk about Enemy Within, because that's XCOM 1.5 and it is fascinating. Now what I said might just be a little bit confusing, but I have a video on that coming next week, and that is going to be fun. But for what we're discussing right now, the principle still stands. A sequel which does not experiment is not memorable. Dark Souls 3 returned to the Dark Souls 1 formula and was very forgettable because of it. But Dark Souls 2, a game I thoroughly dislike, did not follow the Dark Souls 1 formula to the T and is memorable and worth talking about because of it. And I mean, just look at the Lost Planet games. Love them or hate them, they are bold. They are notable. They are different. They are so different from one another, and that's what makes them special. That's what makes them memorable. That's why we love them. They follow the Far Cry formula better than Far Cry does, but more on that in the future. So that's really what separates Camp A and Camp B sequels. Camp A sequels experiment, try new things, plot new courses, and that makes them memorable. If the sequel succeeds, awesome, we've learned something new. We've learned something we can apply to future games. We've found something worth exploring. If it fails, that's cool too. Now we know what to avoid. We've identified a pitfall. But Camp B sequels are not as memorable. They aren't as controversial. Even if they are perfect games, they're still not super exciting. Because we've been there, we've done that, we already, we already know. And again, that doesn't make them bad, it just makes them safe. Which is nice sometimes. Everybody loves a nice, safe, cozy blanket, you know. And that about wraps it up, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Like if you enjoyed, comment your thoughts. What'd you think of the new intro? And I'm about to try an outro on you, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, too. And subscribe if you haven't, because we upload weekly, and we have a lot of fun on this channel, and I would love to have you.